Now, don't get me wrong because of the title of this video. I really like hooks. I think they are a very elegant API that makes it easy not only to use the hook, but also to abstract and reuse across multiple components. But still, you might find yourself, there are some edge cases and you might find yourself in a trap. One very common one is stale closures. It's when your hook, like your use effect, it has access to old versions of your props and state. And in this video, I'm going to show you why that happens, how to deal with it. And uh, uh, it usually happens when you have like a timer or an event handler, some async codes in your use effect. But let's dive right in into an example and we'll go from there. I'm building this typing speed test application. The user has to type this text here, and after a minute, I'll show the speed in words per minute. Right now, the code is pretty straightforward. I have a text area, a controlled text area, which shows the value of this input and sets the input of the state here as they type. Then uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to handle the escape key because if the user hits escape, it means that they want to close the application. But before I want to show a confirmation, say, well, you already typed this much. Are you sure you want to hit you to, to go away? Now, in React, event handlers such as these are usually, usually attached to elements such like in this case here, I have this own change in my text area. But in my case, I don't want to attach the event handler here because I want to be able to handle the escape key, whatever, if, whether the user is focused on the text area or not. So whatever the focus is, I want to be able to capture the escape key. In cases like this, you people usually do an use effect and attach the event handler, event handler to the document. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Use effect, I'm going to pass a function here. And for now, I'm going to pass an empty dependency array, which means that this effect is only going to run once. So here, document dot add event listener. I'm going to listen for the down event, and I'm going to create an inline function here. Handle key down. I'm going to receive an event here, and I'll, I'll finish it later. So I'll pass handle key down here. And as you might know, use effect, if you return a function from the use effect, it's going to call the function on tier down. So I'm going to return a function here that removes this event listener. So it doesn't stay there forever. So remove event listener. Cool. In handle key down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this confirm uh, uh, mass, this confirm code that I have from this external library. And it shows this UI confirm. It expects two arguments. The first one is the body and the second one is the title. Uh, so I'm say, are you sure? And for the body, I'm going to say something like, you already typed this much percent of the text. Now to calculate whatever percent the user has typed, I'm going to create a variable here, say const done radio. It's going to be equals. Why is my const complaining? Oh, of course. Uh, so I'm going to get the input. I'm going to get the length. And I'm going to divide that by the text length here. This is going to give me a value between zero and one because I want to show a percentage. I'm going to multiply it by hundred and maybe do a math.round. So I can get this value here and put inside my confirmation here. Let's try. It is, oh, of course, I'm capturing each and every keystroke. That's not what I want. So uh, I'm going to wrap all of these in an if statement, if e dot key equals escape and we're going to wrap this into brackets. Let's try again. It is an old escape. You already typed 0% of the text. Hmm. Uh, typed. Uh, looks like there's something wrong here. Well, I can assure you this line is not wrong. What's wrong here is that I just got myself into that stale closures situation where the code inside my use effect is seeing the original version of my input whose value was an empty string. So zero divided by whatever is always going to be zero. The solution here is to pass the input, which I depend upon in my dependency array. 
So just to check that this, this, this works, now it shows you already typed 3% of the text. Many people think that this dependency array, I was, I'm only supposed to put values there if I want to rerun the effect on purpose. Uh, let me give you an example. Suppose you're receiving an, an ID by uh, uh, as props and you want, you're want you doing some data fetching inside your effect. So every time the ID changes, you want to do a new data fetch. So you put the ID inside your, your, your arguments, your dependency array. But here's the thing. You actually always want to pass to put in your dependency array whatever values you're using inside your use effects, otherwise the user effects will not run and you will be stuck into this stale closure situation. <clears throat> now, I'm going to take a minute to explain closures in JavaScript. If you already know closures, go straight to the next example. Uh, but for those who are still here, let's do it. So I use JSP here to do some quick prototypes. Uh, so closure in JavaScript uh, is the name that we give to the fact that functions has access to values created outside of the function. Let me give you an example. So uh, const equals Casio and say that I have a function read and I console log hello and the name. Well, this is obviously going to work, right? If I run this, I have hello and I have Casio from my greet, and this proves that my function has access, had access to, to the name outside, which was created outside. This is kind of obvious, but it gets interesting when I have nested functions. So let's say function alter and say const selected number equals seven. Then I'm going to do a timer with set timeout. I'm going to pass a new function here. Let's use an arrow function here. In this case, it wouldn't matter whether it's a function or an arrow function. And I'm going to say console.log. The selected number was, let's use a template string here and output the value of selected number. Now set timeout expects a number here. So let's put 500. And if I call outer, the selected number was seven. Now, what's really interesting here is that inside, if inside my outer function, I return, I'm done. And I console log it from here. Look what happens. The function, the outer function already returned. It means that the function already executed, but the internal function that ha that uh, is accessing the value that was created in the outer function still has access to that value. It means that even though the outer function already done executing, its values are still made available for the internal function. And that's exactly what's happening here. With my first render, it executed the use effect before I had the input here in the dependency array. It created the event listeners, and even though I already did all the renders, these handle key down still had access by closures to the input, but it just so happens that it had access to an old one. So that's why I had to pass the value here. Uh, and it may sound weird that now, because I'm passing the value here and this value is constantly changing, it may look weird for some people that I'm constantly removing and re-adding the event listener here. But that's okay. The browsers, really, the browsers are really fast with this and this is not something that should cause any problem. Okay, so let me show you the second example. For the second one, uh, this 30 here is supposed to be a timer. So I'm going to create a state here, const timer set timer equals use state of zero and I'm going to increment on an use effect. So again, use effect. I'm going to create a function here. And uh, in my case, I'm going to do that interval. In the interval, inside the interval, I'm gonna do set timer of the current timer plus one. Uh, I'm going to do this every second. And again, I, if, I, if I pass this, here's the problem. 
if I pass the timer here in my dependency array, every time the timer updates, I'm going to actually rerun this effect and set another interval. So in my case, I do not want to pass it in here. But of course, this will result in a problem. If I refresh here, oh, of course, I have to use the timer somewhere. So instead of 30 here, timer. So what's going to happen is that it's going to get stuck in, between this loop uh, because it starts as what, in my case, because of fast refresh, it got stuck in the loop between zero and one. Yeah, one and two, but if I refresh the correct one, is it goes from zero to one, and then it never goes besides one, because this timer here, this use effect is caught in a stale closure, timer always is zero here, zero plus one is one. And again, I cannot pass timer here, because otherwise I will be reinitiating this interval over and over and over again. So the, the solution here is pretty simple. The setter in a use state, it accepts a value, but it also expects, accepts a function. And the function, if you use the function format, it gives you the latest version of the value. Um, let's call it T here. So it doesn't matter that this is being called from an effect that it is sh should have access only to older versions of the state. Sets, the setter always has access, always gives you in the functional way, the latest version of the value. So I can return plus one. So I refresh now. Now this is actually working. Just to wrap this up, after a, mi after a minute, I want to show the user uh, their speed test. So I'm going to do this with another, yet another use effect. So use effect. Pass another function here. Because I'm going to use a timer. I all uh, I also want to use an empty dependency array here, otherwise I would be restarting the timer at all times. Uh, oh, and of course I re forgot to return a function here that clear interval const interval id equals this, and then I can call clean interval of the interval again. Good. This is now properly done. Let's move to the next one. So in my case here, I'm going to say set timeout. And I'm going to call this function after a minute. So 60,000 seconds. Again, let's do the clear, uh, let's clear it before moving forward. So const timer ID equals this. And let's return a function that clears timeout or this timer ID. Cool. So what I want to do here is that after a minute, I want to alert the words per minute. So alert your words per minute. And here I'm going to say your speed is whatever. Let's call this words per minute. Let's create this variable here. Post words per minute. It's going to be, uh, let's say, the input. I'm going to split the input on the space, meaning that it's going to be an array of, of individual words. And that's going to be my length. And this should do it. But here's the problem. Uh, in my case, you already know this is going to be caught in a stale closure. It's for this effect, input will always be an empty string. But in my case, I don't want to pass input here because if I pass input here, it's going to keep resetting the timeout and creating a new timeout and it's never going to reach 60. So there's a third alternative to, to uh, uh, getting access to values inside your use effects. Uh, and that's, well, inside use effects with async code, and that is using uh, ref. You might be used to, to using ref to attach to DOM nodes to do imperative code, but a ref is just a, a, an immutable reference that is always up to date. So because it's mutable, it's always going to be up to date. So here's, let, 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 let me show you an example. So instead of inputs, I'm just going to convert. Instead of inputs being a state, I'm going to say that my, that my input now it's going to be a ref. 
of an empty string. Back on my text area, it's not going to be a controlled component anymore, but I'm going to listen to change events and I'm going to say that my input.current equals e.target.value. So this should keep my ref uh, uh, in sync with whatever the user is typing. Now this will break this, so let's comment this out for now. This should still work. Let's fix this one. Instead of using input, I can just do input.current because now that represents whatever the user is typing. And let's see if it works. Instead of a whole minute, let's do like five seconds. So yeah, my word is five words per minute. So yeah, it's working. So as you just saw, uh, uh, the, the case for stale closures, it's not a problem with hooks. It's just the way React works. So just make sure that you understand how hooks work. Just make sure that you use the dependency array in use effect correctly. There's a lint rule created by the React team called exhaustive depths, and I really recommend that you use because that might be some cases where you legitimately don't want to put, explicitly don't want to put some value in your dependency array, but most likely you, you want to put in the dependency array everything that you're using. And for some cases, just using a ref instead of a piece of state might solve your, your problem. All right, see you in the next one.